What's up guys? Que onda amigos? Today I'm gonna attempt the impossible. I'm gonna look at the different accents from Mexico. I'm gonna go from north to south. And I know Mexico has a lot of diversity of languages and accents. Uh, so I'm trying to simplify things a little bit. Uh, looking at the more representative and unique accents. So without further ado, let's get started. And don't forget to stay until the end because I'm going to show you something that really defines the way Mexicans speak beyond region. And this is something fascinating that Mexicans have created two different names for. So stay until the end, I'll tell you what it is. And we're going to get started with the north of Mexico, cities like Monterrey and a lot of beautiful cities that are right there at the border of the United States. So let's listen to it. Pueblo de Norte. Pueblo de Norte andamos, hablamos como que con fuerza, ¿no? Porque a mí siempre me han dicho que hablamos así como que muy pegado, que estamos enojados cuando hablamos. A mí es, es, es típico que me digan siempre. Más porque yo soy de Monterrey, Nuevo León, entonces siempre uh -huh. me dicen eso. I really love how they call this accent because it's very accurate. They call it the Regio accent. And when I went to Google and look at the definition of Regio, I found that it was directed to the king or magnificent, but to me it has more of a connotation that is like really tough, like really strong. So yes, that's how I perceive this accent. So it's as if this accent was coming to you and smack you in the face. Another way to describe it is machacal, which means chopped. So they try to keep everything very short or the syllables, they even shorten some of the words. They say pa, venga pa ca, bato. So, in short, in the north of Mexico, they are uh, short and they tell you things how they are, they are very direct. Uh, and it has a similar connotation and kind of musicality to the Texan accent. I also want to look at the different expressions that this accent has that make it unique. Something that they say a lot is estar de madre. And this is when something is really, really great, really cool but it kind of has more energy to it. Está de madre. Este video está de madre. Also, in the north of Mexico, they don't work, they pull. They use the verb that we normally use for pull, jalar, to mean work. And I think this is very smart because people are always pushing hard when they are trying to work, but in the north of Mexico, they are smarter. They don't push, they pull. It's also important to point out that the north of Mexico has many variations of the accent. For example, in Chihuahua, instead of going like ch, they go like sh. They go with a more softer sound. So they don't say Chihuahua, they say Chihuahua. And guys, if you want to have a lot of fun, get the whitest person you know to read the word Chihuahua for you. Don't tell them how it's pronounced. It's is the best thing I heard. And now we're gonna move to Mexico City, where we're gonna listen to the Chilango accent. So in Mexico City, the people that are from this area, they call it call them Chilangos. Está bien chido. Está bien chido. Pero cómo lo cómo lo emplearía un Chilango? O sea, Natania dijo la chinga chido, dijo el. No, pues es de, no sé, si me enseñas tu nuevo teléfono, tu nuevo reloj, lo yo robas. te digo, está bien chido y te lo robo. No, no, no. Es la expresión de está bien, está padre y para... And I don't know if you notice that something that is very different to the northern accent is that it has more musicality to it, it's more cantaito. So yes, more music to the ears, they kind of elongate. Uh, their um, syllables a little bit more, uh, which makes for more of a rhythmic pattern to it. Of course, even within Mexico City, there is a lot of variety, and I want you guys to stay until the end because I'm gonna talk about one of the varieties that really kind of defines how people speak in Mexico. So please stay until the end of this video to, to see something that is very important, especially, especially in Mexico City. But if I had to find something that kind of unifies Chilangos and that is very characteristic of their accent is for sure, for sure, how playful and skilled they are with the way they build their expressions and unique sentences. Let me give you a few examples. For example, instead of por supuesto, which is of course, 
they say por su pollo, which is like because of his chicken. Instead of que pasó, which means what happened, they say que pachuca por Toluca. And I'm not even gonna try to translate that one. Even very simple sentences like sí, which means yes, uh, they transform it to Simona la Mona. So if you wanna fit in with Chilangos, just have fun with words. Play around even with the smaller ones that you can think of, like yes, Yesenia la gitana. And last but not least, we move to the peninsula of Yucatán, where we're gonna listen to the Yucateco. Onda, pues hasta que me decido hacer esto, la verdad que mucha gente me ha estado pidiendo este video, así que hoy les voy a enseñar a hablar como yucateco. Oigan, pues muchos que me siguen en la cuenta de TikTok dicen que yo no soy yucateco porque no hablo como yucateco, pero soy más yucateco que la cochinita pibil, literal. Oigan, es que los yucatecos tenemos una forma... To me, yucateco, for some strange reason that I cannot quite figure out in my mind, sounds like a mix between... Portuguese and the traditional Mexican, more standard, more Chilango accent that I normally hear. Nosa, nosa, así se me mata. Ay, se pego, ay, ay, se pego. Something else is that they are very explosive in some letters in particular, like for example the letter P. So instead of pelota, they say pelota. Pelota. Yucatecos also have this tendency of eating a lot of letters and even words. So for example, instead of saying ahí está, which means that's there, they say ahí está, ahí está, ahí está. They even eat their tortillas, which is crazy. I know Mexicans eat a lot of tortillas, but they eat it to a level that I just cannot imagine. They say tortilla, tortilla. Like, the double L completely disappears. I think some of the expressions that I started looking at probably come from the Maya language because I think their accent has been influenced a lot by the Mayas that lived in the region and some of them that still do live there. So, for example, they have a word that is called kixpol and kixpol means messy hair and that's always, always, always my hairstyle, especially before I record. And I cannot talk about yucatecos without talking about bombas. And bombas are some very unique sayings that sometimes are accompanied by music and it's very, very indigenous to this area. And I have to read you one just because I think it's magic. And it says, Quisiera ser zapatito de tu diminuto pie para ver de vez en cuando lo que el zapatito ve. Bomba! It is important to point out that at the end of these sayings and songs they always say Bomba! Yucatecos, I'm sorry if I didn't do justice to your bombas. Please, please comment below links to videos that uh, tell us about bombas. I really want to see more. This is amazing. All right, and as promised, I told you that at the end of this video I was going to tell you something that really determines the way people speak in Mexico and this is also the case in other places, in Colombia, in the United States, I'm sure. So this is social class. The cool thing is that in Mexico they have some very, very specific terms to define people from either end of the spectrum. On one end of the spectrum we have the fresas, normally strawberries, but in this case it means kind of wealthy and pretentious people and they speak as if they always had a hot potato in the mouth. Like, hello, hola, yo soy Mexico, uh, que onda wey, o sea, o sea. And then at the other end of the spectrum we have the nacos. And these are maybe more ordinary working class people. And they actually use a lot of those playful expressions that I told you that the Chilangos use, but maybe a little bit more crass. So they will say things that, like for example, to say hi, they say, Que Honduras mi Nicaragua. And I'm sorry, I have to say it with a Ñero Colombian accent instead of a Naco Mexican accent. 
Uh, I tried, but I, re I recorded this clip so many times. Alright people, please comment below any more in-depth insights into different Mexican accents. I'm sorry I wasn't able to touch on all of them. Sometimes for my Colombian ear, I didn't have like the, like the special superpowers to really tell the difference between place and place. To me, they all sounded Mexican. But I learned a lot and I want to learn more. So please let us know in the comments what else you know about Mexican accents. And also don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more videos about languages, accents, culture, and so much more. Adios mis panas.